Hi, my name is Miss Bethany, and I'm the vocal music teacher at Rox Hill Elementary School in West Seattle. I miss my Rox Hill rock stars so much, so I'm really excited to be able to do some fun music with you today. I am coming to you today from my library slash dining room slash living room slash office slash workout room slash music room. I have one room, so this is it. I don't have a lot of space in my tiny apartment, but I imagine some of you might know what that feels like. And that's okay, because we don't need a lot of space for today's lesson. All you need today is your body and a little bit of space to move. So let's get started. We're gonna start by playing a game and I want you to look right in your television or your computer screen and pretend like you're looking into a mirror. And I want you to do with your body what I'm doing with my body. Are you ready? Now, instead of being my mirror, I would like you to be my echo. So that means that I'm going to make a sound with my body and I want you to make that same sound back to me. Okay, so let's try it. Ooh. Great job. Now I would like to introduce you to a special guest who's gonna help us use those beautiful singing voices that are ready to make gorgeous music. Her name is Miss Zhu. Would you please welcome Miss Zhu? Hi Miss Bethany, um, this is Miss Zhu, and we have an exciting song today. Although we might not be able to understand some of the words in the song, listen for the mood of the song. Do you think this is an active, like a dance type of song? Or is this a lullaby? Or is this just a story? It goes like this. Very good. So what do you think? Is this a dance? Or is this a lullaby? Or is this, is this just a story? Yeah, this is so. This is actually a, a story. Um, we're singing in Portuguese. This is a song from Brazil. And in this song, this little girl was talking about her... Um, her adventures in the sea. So she went to the sea to take a swim and then she lost her ring. She had a little ring that she lost. And the sea gave back to her this little seashell um, as, as a gift since she had lost her ring. And she ke keeps wondering what happened to her ring. Maybe, maybe a whale ate it. Um, or maybe a mermaid is now wearing her ring. 
Or maybe the fisherman found her ring and gave it to his love. Um, and that's our song. Now that we know that, do you think we could make ocean sounds? We can, can we create a soundscape for, for this song? You can rub, rub your hands against each other. You can create vocal sounds for, for the sea or the wind. Think about all the sounds you would hear um, near an ocean, okay? Here we go. I'll play this song and you will create the soundscape. Here we go. Very good. Here again. Now that we know the story of the song, we are going to create some gestures with it. Would you please follow me? Perdi meu anel no mar, não pude mais encontrar. E o mar me trouxe uma concha de presente pra me dar. Caiu na guela da baleia, ou então no dedo da sereia. Ou quem sabe um pescador achou o anel e deu pro seu amor. Very good. Very good. Now we have one more thing to do before we before we move on. Um, we won't have time to learn the, all the words of the song, but there's, there, that's not not a problem. We can we can sing the melody without 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 the words. Can you sing the song in Lulu with me like this? Lulu, 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 Lulu. Okay, let's do it together. One, two, here we go. Now let's do it one more time, and this time I'm not going to help you with my hands, but you got this. picked up some of the words you are welcome to sing with me if you are if you want to sing in Lulu again that's totally fine too okay one last thing before we move on Very good. Thank you very much. Now, back to you, Miss Bethany. Bye. Thank you so much, Ms. Ju, for that beautiful song. I'm going to be humming that song about the sea to myself, I think, all day long. 
Now we are going to play a game called Las Estatuas de Marfil. Las Estatuas de Marfil means the statues of Marfil. And this game comes from Mexico. Marfil is a place in Mexico. And when we play this game, every time I count to three in Spanish, we are going to freeze like a statue. And to help us with our lesson, we're going to freeze in statues of different animal shapes. So you get to pick which animal you want to be, and I'm going to pretend to be some different animals, and we'll see if you can guess which ones I'm pretending to be. This game is very simple to play. When I sing the rhyme, we're going to march around the room to the beat, and then when I count to three in Spanish, do you know how to count to three in Spanish? Uno, dos, y... Tres. Muy bien. So when I say uno, dos y tres así, you're going to freeze like the statue of any animal you choose. We'll play four or five times so you get a chance to be a few different animals if you would like. Are you ready? Let's play the game. A las estatuas de marfil Uno, dos y tres, así. A las estatuas de marfil. Uno, dos y tres, así. A las estatuas de marfil. Uno, dos y tres, así. A las estatuas de marfil, uno, dos y tres, así. That was so great. I hope you had as much fun as I had moving around and getting to pretend like I was all of my favorite animals. Could you tell what some of the animals were that I was trying to be? What was this one? Did you guess tiger? You did? Oh, you're so smart. I was trying to be a tiger. It also could have been a lion or another fierce sort of cat, but I was imagining that I was a tiger. Do you know how many syllables are in tiger? If we were to clap out the word tiger, how many times did I clap? Can you try it with me? Tiger, two syllables, right? What about, ooh, what about this animal? I kind of broke the statue rule and I was waving my arms. Did you guess butterfly? That was a tricky one. I was trying to be a butterfly because I also love butterflies. Do you know how many syllables there are in butterfly? Let's try to clap it out. Butterfly. Can you try it with me? Butterfly. Three, right? Good job. Now, what about this one? What animal makes a face like that? Did you guess fish? You're so good at this game. I was trying to be a fish. How many syllables in fish? Fish. Can you try it with me? Fish. That's one. Good job. Now, since this game comes from Mexico and that I was singing the song in Spanish. I wonder if we can say some of these animal names in Spanish. Hmm. Do you know how to say tiger in Spanish? Did you say tigre? Oh my goodness. You are, I can't believe how smart you are. Tigre, can you say it with me? Tigre, your turn. How many syllables are in tiger when we say it in Spanish? Tigre. Two, just like tiger. It's the same, isn't it? That's pretty cool. What about this animal? Do you remember when I was doing this? With a long waving nose? I wonder what animal that is. It's an elephant, yes. How many syllables in elefante? Ooh, I just gave it away. 
How many syllables if we say it in Spanish? Elefante. Four, right? How about if we say it in English? Elephant. That's only three syllables. So depending on what language you're saying the animal name, it might change how many syllables or how many parts of the word there are. Now I have some rhythm patterns right here written down on my paper. And I wonder if you could help me match some of our animal names to these three different patterns. If we have one note, that means there's one clap. So if you're this note, this is where we would put the animal names that have only one syllable. This column has two notes, so that would show us two claps, and that would be for our animal names that have two syllables or two parts. And then this one has how many notes? Three, that's right. So this rhythm would match with our animal names that have three syllables. I didn't have enough room to put four, but if you wanted to, you could do four notes and then you could put an animal like elefante, where there's four in that, in that column. So let's see, what are some of the animal names that only have one clap or one syllable? Did you remember fish? Yeah, fish has one syllable. What about frog? Absolutely. What about dog? Dog has only one syllable, right, Staley? He's still sleeping back there. Dog has one syllable. What if we said it in Spanish? The word for dog in Spanish is perro. Can you say that? Perro. So that's two syllables. So if we were to put perro, we'd have to put it in the second column with the two notes, right? Because there's two parts to the word, perro. Can you think of some other two syllable word animal names? Did we say tiger? What about tigre? Yeah. What about elephant? Does that have two syllables? No, it doesn't. Elephant has three syllables, so we'd have to put that one in this column. Elephant, right? So let's pick three animal names. I'm going to choose fish, and then I wanna include one in Spanish, so I'm gonna say dog, because I absolutely love dogs, because I have a perro of my own, and he is all of my heart. I love him. And so Staley's gonna be perro, and then let's do um, flamingo, okay? So we're gonna make a little rhythm pattern with fish, perro, flamingo. Fish, perro, flamingo. Fish, perro, flamingo. Fish, perro, flamingo. Can you clap it with me? Fish, perro, flamingo. 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 Good! I am so pleased that we were able to make a musical pattern together just using animal names and our fun game from Mexico. I hope you had fun playing Las Estatuas de Marfil with me and maybe you can play it again sometime. <laughs>